this is uh, Steve Ward's DRSSTC1. It's got the OCD on it. This primary I wound to be a higher impedance primary to run continuous wave on my other well, my PLL setup right there sitting in the chair. Uh, but right now I'm just using it as a test primary on this coil. These are 400 volt little CBB deals. So you can see I've got rows of five. So I've basically got 60 nanofarad right here on the MMC. I'm just sort of testing this circuit out, going through the normal process. I've got my feedback transform right here. So that's about 32 turns or so. And then I've got my OCD. I'm trying to uh, set that burden resistor value uh, to work with this CT. Looking like I need to uh, drop that down a whole bunch. Uh, and I'm just kind of assuming that my tuning is, is fairly close here. So this coil, I remember, was running about 250 kilohertz on a different circuit using secondary feedback. With this primary and that capacitor, it's running around that frequency. Java TC, see I've put in my 60 nanofarad tank capacitance. Not really messing with the floor and surroundings, all that stuff. So I'm just putting in my secondary coil data as a rough estimate. What it gives me is about... 256 so that's pretty close the actual dc resistance of the coil is closer to like 670 i'll just have my own little external ground clip that's going to the secondary I've got everything wired up how it normally would be just it's not all closed up and i'll take this supply here this is my battery supply so i'll use the dc output to run my logic and i can see what that logic is pulling it's always good to see and then I'll take my uh, inverter that I've got hooked in here, a little cheap inverter. That's going to the variac. So that's going to be a square wave output again. I haven't really had much problem. So I can use that to vary the output voltage. The thing about that is if something goes wrong, the uh, inverter is just going to cut off. Nothing's going to explode. If anything, it'll just be a silent death if there is one, probably from over voltage or something like that. So if I cut that on and slowly bring it up, almost immediately... My uh, OCP comes on, so you can see the little light comes on. It's blocking pretty much all the output. When I kind of detune it a little bit or get it closer in tune, it'll let me pull a little something. That uh, burden resistor is probably way too high. It's causing this to uh, basically go into shutdown way too early so i'm gonna drop that burden resistance down so i've made a temporary connection with a 5 ohm resistor across that 20 ohm resistor to drop it to a little bit under 5 ohms and So I can bring it to about 50 now. So it's still not looking like with that extra that I can turn it that I'll be able to cut it all the way to uh, 120 or so. It looks like it's still going to limit. So probably what I'm going to have to do is drop that down just a hair more and then I'll be able to cut it all the way up. So this is just assuming that I'm not, you know, getting into dangerous peak amps here. I'm just sort of setting it incrementally with this tuning that I think is about ballpark uh, to where I can actually cut it all the way up without the OCD limiting. And from there I'll sort of, you know, fine tune it, try to get an idea. Uh, but I guess the idea there is... If I'm this close to my tuning through guesstimation and it's pulling too many peak amps at 120, then I've got an issue anyway, so, you know, screw it. Uh, but that's sort of how I'm going about it. So, again, I need to drop that down slightly more and then I'll be able to start playing around with it. But it's actually running at, it's just a very extremely low voltage right now. It's actually running, well, let me move my arm away. It's actually about 185 but another thing you can see I've got these overshoots like 20% overshoots that's with I believe 5 ohm gate resistors on these IGBTs so given that this is actually running closer to 185 right now um, 
and this had closer to a uh, 250 kilohertz natural frequency it's actually more detuned than I thought it was so it's a good deal over 20% detuned and that's too far so let's just say you know what would happen if I was to add something like this guy on there all right so now adding that top load on I think the primary LC is running probably something like 170 uh, 175 now maybe got this little thing set on 50 like it was before and now I'm able to cut the OCP back a little bit more where it's just a little bit over halfway and now I can run it at 50 So anyway, that's about the extent uh, of the testing I would want to do with the way this is sitting, at least as far as the voltage I would feed it. You know, since I'm probably not going to use this primary, uh, there's really no point testing that further. But I could basically go ahead and close this up where I have everything sitting the way it is. But, you know, I'll just pop out the box with the two primary leads at the ground wire right here poked out, which the bottom of the secondary would hook to. Because then it will actually be hooked to uh, mains power, running off the mains ground, which again, I normally don't have too much of a problem with. Would have been nice to add like a filter or something in here, but again, whatever. This used to be a different setup, but you know, that's how I Frankensteined it. And uh, this will be something to where once I finally figure out an ideal secondary, I can just throw the primary LC on, go through the same process but basically just at that point just honing the primary just get them closer in tune top on it something like that i'm thinking maybe a coil you know closer to that size would be all right the smaller the better but the smaller obviously the smaller the wire i'm gonna have to use to wind it. and i don't know if i'm gonna have a pancake or not and i'll probably just stay helical just because it's easier you know some deal like that i think will be pretty cool Maybe if it can even, uh, you know, ground strike for the logic instead of just coming out with two DC wires right here. I'm going to have the same setup where a small lithium battery down in here is going to power a little tiny boost converter. Then I'm going to have that USB rechargeable. That's going to drive the logic. So that should be enough. Uh, the only downside is the fan, which is always on. Normally I have a thermal switch to engage that when things get hot, which I don't have in this case. So that's probably something I'm going to end up doing, which is always a test measure. Because that way, once I've got everything closed up, start doing my tuning around, start running it, max voltage, start cutting up the on time. And then just run it like that to see how long it takes for that fan to actually kick on. Just sort of a bootleg way to uh, monitor the temperature.